Hello and welcome to another DCS Mission Editor Tutorials Guide um, an Introduction for Beginners At the end of this one you're going to fully understand what uh, the difference between triggers, trigger zones and flags are what they're for, how they work together and how they're going to help improve make your missions loads better so if you haven't already done so check out the initial introduction to this series which is not in the 1 to 5 it's the introduction to the 1 to 5 this is now episode 1 and without further ado let's now get into triggers zones and flags and how to use them just adding a quick note that for the next three or so minutes we'll go and go into theory on what triggers flags and the trigger zones are and then we'll go into some practical after the three minutes if you're bored with theory or you already think you know some of it go ahead and skip this next three minutes i'll put a time sequence into the uh, description for you to do that um, but for those of us who are new i strongly recommend you stick with this bit even though it might seem a bit boring because this is the real foundational stuff on how to make missions and once you get your head around this everything else will be much easier and start falling into place triggers flags and trigger zones so let's start with a flag and a flag is simply a way to store the answer to a yes or a no question or a true or a false condition. And you're asking this question to the mission itself. For example, you could ask, is there a plane in a certain area? And the answer is either going to be true or false. And you can send that answer to, let's for example, say flag number one. And then in the future, instead of checking up, is there an aircraft all the time? You just say, is flag one true or false? Next, we'll have a little look at trigger zones. And these are really easy. These are just areas on the map that we either put a circle or a four point area over the map. And then we can check if something's happening. So again, ignoring that bullseye there, you can see we've created a circle trigger here along the coastline. We've enabled, labelled it Whiskey Zulu 1, WZ1. And then in this area, we could, for example, check in Whiskey Zulu 1, is there a plane? Yes or no? And put that out to what we've just discussed, a flag. And finally, it's triggers. And you may have already guessed it. I've already touched it on a couple of times. Triggers are the thing that checks for the condition of something. So for example, an area of somewhere is a trigger zone. So let's just call it zone and forget the word trigger for there. So there's an area zone and we want to check on a condition if something's happening. And to use this check, that's what I'm going to refer to as the trigger. So for example, is there a plane over a certain area? That's a kind of English way of putting it, but that's what we're going to make happen in the game. So to make that happen, we need a trigger, we need a zone, and then we're going to output the answer to a flag. And we'll just use flag number one for simplicity. Triggers are checked every second as the mission or the game plays on. And so it may be that the trigger is not true now, because there's no plane in the certain area, but it may be that in 30 seconds time, or maybe in two hours time, that a plane does cross into that area, in which case the condition is met and the trigger becomes true. If the trigger becomes true, and we've told on the action that the flag one to become true, then flag one also becomes true. So we have a zone and the trigger and the flag. Let's go put that into practice. Listening back to some of that, I realise it could sound a bit word salady. If that's what you thought, don't worry about it. This will all make sense when we look into the mission editor right now. Welcome to the mission editor. This time we won't be ending up with a fully worked mission or anything, but we will be going over the flags and zones and triggers in detail. So by the end of this, you'll know all about it and you'll be able to use them in all your missions and 
It is literally the way to make stuff happen. So to begin with, I'm going to just pop down the first armoured uh, unit. And there's been a DCS update since then. And I've uh, deleted all my meta shaders. So if there's a bit of stutter in the uh, loading, forgive that. But here's the unit. And you can see here the default group name is ground one. We'll recap on some of these things. And the default unit name is ground one dash one. So remember the group, we can call it anything. Let's call it uh, group, group no one, just to uh, make the point. And unit, and we'll just call it unit one. But again, call it anything you like. This is just the point. And I'm just going to make it go from this side of this field to that side. Simple as that. Just using a simple waypoint. If you come here and click on the waypoint, you see we've got two waypoints, the start and the finish. Zero the start. You see the speed oftentimes defaults to zero. I'm just going to put something like 20 knots in just so that it's already rolling. And 20 knots at waypoint one. So it should go there quite quickly. Then what we could also do, once we get from to waypoint one, I'm going to add a couple more here. Waypoint two and waypoint three. So fairly obvious, this truck's going to follow these waypoints at 20 knots. So far, everybody with me, if not, you must go back to the introduction. I'm going to create a zone, a trigger zone over this waypoint one. So I've clicked on that. It's not the bullseye one, which is just the most pointless button. And I'm going to pop it down. Whoops. No, I'm not because I clicked on waypoint one. There we go. And the name defaults to new trigger zone one. In keeping with they're called zones. Let's just call it zone. You don't have to, but let's just call it zone at waypoint one. Could call it anything I like. I, I, I just keep going on about that because it's important to try and call things what you'll remember what they are later on in the mission. Because if you start making a mission that gets bigger and bigger and better and better and more and more complex... If you just label things as codes or random names, you're going to forget what they are. I'm going to reduce the size. And if you hold the middle mouse button down, you see you get this thing going on like a ruler. And I'm going to reduce the size, let's say, to about 350 feet, something like that. And that's the radius, all right? So from the middle to the end, not actually all the way across, you see. And let's pop that right over waypoint one. So this amphib unit, whatever you want to call it, this armored personnel carrier, is going to head towards waypoint one and enter this zone. What's going to happen when it enters the zone? Well, clearly nothing because we've not told it to do anything yet. So let's come into the triggers and let's say new. And we give it a name. Again, the name can be anything you want. Here's the three columns, all right? The name's on the left. What hap What it's checking for in the middle, the conditions, yeah, the questions that you're asking. And then on the right, what's it going to do? So let's just call it APC arrives waypoint one. Really, it's in the zone, yeah? So... Let's let's be a bit more specific. It's not waypoint one, it's in the zone one. So how are we going to check that the APC has arrived at that zone? Well, let's have a look here. Type. It's a unit, but it's also a group, right? And because there's only one unit in the group, the group is, is going to be the same thing, right? If we had two units, then clearly the group is both the units, but the unit could be either or. So let's try not overcomplicate things, man. Try not overcomplicate. So let's just say the unit, let's leave it at unit, is inside the zone. And if you remember, we called it unit one. And that's the only one we can choose because there is nothing else on the map yet. 
So when unit one is in zone, zone at waypoint one, again, this is the only zone we've created. So we can only pick from these two. And clearly we can't go much wrong because there's nothing else to choose from. If we'd added more units or more uh, zones, there would be in this drop down here automatically. So when the unit one is inside zone at waypoint one, then do this. So for now, let's just say flag on number one. Now it can be any number that you like and it doesn't, you don't have to use them all. They don't have to be in order. You just got to remember which ones you're using for which thing. So whether it's flag one, flag two, flag 22, flag 222, flag 1,235, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't know how high you can go. I wouldn't try doing that because uh, you'd probably get a corrupted mission. But certainly I've gone easily into the thousand and it has not been a problem. Let's just stick with flag one for now. Keep things nice and simple. So the only thing that's going to happen when that gets there is the flag. If you imagine a guy holding a flag in position one, he's going to lift his flag up in the air when this happens and basically say, yeah, this flag here, it's on. It's been activated. It's true. The answer is yes. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, let's create a completely separate unit over here. And just so that we can see it's different, let's also make it different. Let's select this guy. And this time we're going to call the group Summit Completely Different. My Yorkshire Slang Summit Completely Different. That's the group, all right? And the unit... We're going to call the box with an MG on top. Right, it looks like a box with an MG on top. And again, we're going to give it a speed, this time 15 knots. And we're going to get it to go there also. And then, I don't know, it can go its own separate way. doesn't matter, right? Let's give him a second guy. And you see we've got the main the front unit, yeah, the, the, the leader if you like, number one of two, and that was the one that we just put down. If we go over to unit two of two, this one here, that's like the, the, the follower, the wingman if you like. You see the group name is exactly the same, but the unit name, it's automatically, you know, DCS has automatically appended the dash one. That's because you can't have two things the same name. Clearly not. Obviously, the group's the same, belongs to the same group, but it's a different unit. Now, you can call the second one whatever you like, as long as it doesn't match. So let's just call it whatever you like. Now. Clearly, this would be bad etiquette in mission editing because you'd think the box with the NG on top, all right, that kind of describes that one. But whatever you like, I mean, how do I know that that's... I'm just making the point, right? That you can call it whatever you like. So the box with an MG on top, let's just call it the box with MG on top uh, 2. Right, that's a unique name. Now let's come back into the triggers. Once the MP APC arrives at zone one, and again, that's this one, flag one. Let's clone that, but I'm going to change it. The only reason I'm cloning it is it's a lot easier to, if you're doing something that's almost the same, if you clone it, you can then just change the details without having to scroll through all these things. So let's rename this one so it's uh, unique. So when the APC arrives, well, this one, we're, we're just going to call it box. When the box, these, yeah, arrive at zone one, conditions, unit. Well, we could pick just one unit, but I'm going to choose the group. So let's go to part of the group. And that way, if one of them gets lost or one's in formation and it drives outside of that zone, 
it or one gets stuck behind a tree, it's not going to cause the entire thing to hold up. So I'm just going to say when part of the group is in that zone, what group? Well, if you remember, group no one was this one. Something completely different was what we called that group. I should have perhaps called it the second group just to make it more obvious, but we called it something completely different. And again, the zone, we have only got one, this zone at waypoint one. So when the box arrives, which we've called something completely different at zone one, then make this happen. Well, flag one, no, because if you remember, flag one is this. And if we make the same flag, it's going to start confusing the mission. So let's call this one flag number two. And so these things arriving there said in another way is that's going to be flag one. When that gets there, it's going to make flag one true. When either of those get there, it's going to be flag number two. Now, instead of writing all that out again, we're this time, once, we're going to check that both have arrived. And what we're just going to say, the condition, rather than checking all these things, we're just going to say, is flag true one? And we know that's it, every flag is false, off, or zero by default when the mission starts, yeah? The only way that the, any flag is going to be true is if you tell it to be true. And it's only going to be true when the conditions that we've set arrive. So flag one true is when that's there. Let's clone that. And this one was flag true. Now, this bit here, it's important to say is and. So there's two lines there for this one. This, you know, these triggers here only have one uh, line. This one here has two. And they're ands, all right? If we press the top one and press or, what it's going to do is say, if flag one is true or flag two is true, then do this. But we're going to get rid of that or, and the default is and, which means if flag one is true or flag two is true, it ain't going to do anything. It's going to wait until they're both true. So when both these things have happened, then do this. And the action is going to be another flag. And hopefully now you can begin to see the use of flags, right? Flag three, because it would take quite a bit of lines now to check if both of these have gone through that zone. Or we can just say, is flag three true? Because that's only going to happen if flag one and two have been true. And flag two is only going to be true if that group there has gone through. I hope beginning to follow sort of the logic there. Right, so let's make something happen when flag three becomes true. All right. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to pop down uh, some cones so that we can see um, where are we? some tire... I'm looking for something really small. Like, here we go. Uh, not that, sorry. Tire. There we go. Uh, just to make it really obvious, so I'm going to click there and I'm going to copy Control c and I'm just going to... Pressing Control v just just so I can clearly see where the edge of that trigger is once we start, right? And now I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to plonk us down in a helicopter just so it's easy for us to watch this. Pop it there. I'm going to change it from skill to player. And I'm going to change the type from takeoff from ground hot just so that we can see this. And then what I'm going to do is make something happen when that flag three comes on. So let's place um, something else all together. I know. Um, let's choose. Let's choose this device here and we'll place it uh, there just to make sure that we can see it. So it's this little radar device here. 
How far away are we from that? 2,000 feet, that's plenty. Perhaps we can even come a bit closer. I'm going to give this radar device a name. Group Radar. Uh, let's call it Sam. And let's call the unit name Radar. Again, you don't have to name them. You can leave them default if you like. It's just about remembering what they are. Coming into Triggers. A new line. Once Flag 3. Again, call it what you like. This is just for... I wouldn't even be this precise myself normally. It's just for the purposes of... Hopefully everybody can follow along if I try and make it as clear as possible. And if you feel that I'm going over stuff a bit too much, you know, I, I apologise. Again, it's just so that absolutely everybody follows along because this is really the fundamentals of mission editing. And you get this down, everything else is much easier and falls into place. So flag three, condition. All that we're checking for is, is the flag true, number three. And I'm not going to go over it all again. We know flag 3 needs flag 2 and flag 1 to be true and what causes them. So when flag 3 is true, then action. And we're going to come down here, explode unit. And we're going to drop down. Now you see there's a whole list of them. And we're going to explode the radar, which we named that. So I'm going to preview this mission now. And I hope without me explaining any el anything else now, you've followed on what is going to happen. So I'm not don't need to save it. There's the APC. And why can't I see the... Oh, look, you can barely see these tyres. There they are, look. In the grass. Um, if I press Control F11, is it? I believe I can... Yes. Okay. Just so we can unhook. So there's the radar. Can I zoom in with this view? Oh yes, great, right, that helps. So there's the radar, and here's this guy, and there's the tyres. And here he is rolling in, right over the top of one. But nothing's happened. And that's because the only thing that's happened is flag one has become true. But by itself, if you remember, Flag 1 coming true doesn't do anything and he's now driving on to the other waypoint. But here comes the other two, slightly slower, and these are going to make Flag 2 become true once either one of them gets inside that area. Remember, once part of group, can be both of them, but just needs one of them to go in that area, is going to make flag 2 become true. And if you remember, that that next trigger was when flag 1 is true and flag 2 is true, then make flag 3 true. And if you remember, when flag 3 is true, that radar is going to explode. So let's see how quick that happens. Speed it up a tad. And let's slow it back down to normal speed. Boom. About a second. And remember the triggers check every second. And so that is an example of triggers and flags and zones. So let's work on this a little bit more because I'm going to show you one of the very good reasons to use flags. Well, I'll show two. So here we are in the helicopter. 
the group name rotary one and the pilot rotary one one. Let's call the group name Huey group and let's call the pilot name um, snake whoops not SS <laughs> snake yeah we all know we all know I'm trying to keep it uh, you know try not to get it flagged up or anything what I'm gonna do now is add another trigger zone and we'll just call this one uh, zone two make the size 500 and pop it down there let's come into the uh, rules for triggers I'm trying to give stuff more visual than just flags, but I'm trying to incorporate flags into it so that you can see how one goes into the other. So what I'm going to do here is pop down. Uh, I'm just going to choose the red side and I'm going to click armor. And they can be any. So let's pick to what would have been um, German tanks. Now, the best tank, apparently, that of the war, basically, was the German Tiger II. They just didn't build enough of them to make a difference. But these things were... These got huge kill-loss ratios against, uh, well, basically, the Americans. And I think there were some on the Eastern Front as well. So let's pop four of them on. The group name, we'll just call them Tigers. I guess the Tiger 2s, right? Let's call them Tiger 2s. Don't know if we can have apostrophe. Tiger 2s. And unit name. Again, it's tried to auto name them Sam 1 dash. You know, I'm not bothered. Let's just go with the group name, Tiger 2s, all right? Now, they're going to spawn instantly unless we say late activation. And now they won't appear until we tell them to. Let's pop them in this field over here. And then what we're going to do is over here, uh, about 3,000 feet away, going to pick the blue side and we're going to pop down some American uh, World War II type tank. Uh, the Sherman. There we go. And we're going to put more than four down. Let's give them um, ten. And see who wins. They're both just on the average skill. And the group name here, we're going to call them Shermans. That's it. Again, unit name. Completely wrong. DCS has tried to auto-guess what it should be called. I don't know why it's so bass backwards, but never mind. Once again, late activation. So we've got the Sherman group set to late activate. We've got the uh, Tiger 2 group set to late activate. In other words, they're not going to appear at all until we tell them to. Let's just set the speed to something like 9 knots that way. And the American ones, or the blue ones, 9 knots that way just to make absolutely sure they cross now I'm not sure who's going to win here but it'll be interesting to find out but we're going to wait for something to happen before spawning them so what I'm going to do is somehow incorporate this zone 2 Um, I've got, I, I've got, I've got a really good idea. Right. This is, I, I'm trying to give an example here that would be not just pointless now, but something that you could use in a mission. All right. 
So let's put the tower with the uh, the tires with the flag just because they're a lot easier to see. And I'm going to move this uh, zone to um, over here. Let's make it smaller to something like 200 feet. Now what I want to do is when I land in here, and I emphasize the word land, not just fly over, then I want these to activate. And I'm going to use these flags so that I can see when I'm in the game where this zone is. So what I'm going to do is just click on that one. I know it's out of the way. Press Control C. I'm going to deselect it. And now I'm going to move my mouse pointer over the edge of this circle. And then just every so often pressing Control and V to paste. And this is just so when I'm flying, I can very easily see where zone two is. All right. So my Huey is called Snake She or Huey Group, and that trigger zone's obviously called Trigger. Uh, sorry, Zone Two. So I'm going to come into the triggers, and let's create a new trigger, and we're going to call it. Let's call it Tanks Activation. And the condition is going to be. Well, for a start, when my Huey is in that zone. So let's start with that. Unit, where are we? Unit inside zone. Snake, she was the name of my unit. And zone two, you see they've got both zones there now. Zone two. But remember, these zones stretch up to infinity into the sky. So if I just flew over there, Oh no, that's going to have deleted it, isn't it? Because when you come out, it deletes it. I accidentally clicked out. Uh, wrong one. Right. Tanks. That's annoying about this. Remember, before exiting this, have a full line of summit. And if you're not sure what to put in, just put something random in like text message temporary just so you don't lose the entire line when you come out of this screen. So, condition, unit inside zone, zone 2, action. Let's come down here and group activate and we want the Shermans to activate and we'll clone that because we then just change this to the Tiger 2s. Remember, it's going to do everything in that list once that's met. Clearly, though, this isn't right because I could fly over that trigger and it's going to activate because I'm going to be inside that zone even if I'm doing 500 knots at 50,000 feet. Clearly, I'm not going to win the helicopter, but you get the point because it stretches all the way up. So the way to get around that is to put in another check. Remember, all the conditions have to be true. So let's create a new condition and say something like unit AGL above ground level is lower than. Now I won't put zero because it's not going to be lower than zero. And sometimes with wheels or skids, also, one can be a bit high. So let's say something like, let's try four. And the unit again is me. So if I'm lower than four, I can't remember if that's feet or meters. Let's say it's feet. If I'm lower than four feet and I'm in that zone, then do this. But I could just be flying low over. So let's do one final check. Just going to clone it and change this to speed. Well, if I've landed, clearly my speed is definitely going to be lower than one knot. So if my speed's lower than one knot and my altitude above ground level is lower than four and I'm inside this zone, then do this. So let's see if that happens. Bearing in mind, these other things are still going to go on. Let's preview the mission.
10 view. No tanks. Here's where we're going to be. Let's come into cockpit view and see if we can't see the Fly over it to begin with. You can see the glass. There's actually loads of them. Look how much room there is. You can realize how big this room was. We've flown over it and still no tanks as we would expect. And there you go, they've spawned. Because we've landed in there. Let's have a quick view. Is it F7? Yeah, there we go. And who's going to win that fight? We've got a nice uh, front. What are they doing? Control F. Why are these two touching? And what's he doing with his barrel? Bye just took him to the face and it didn't touch him. Alright. This is a lesson about triggers. You can do that yourself, right? Let's come back out to the editor. Let's get one more, uh, one more example in that I wanted to do, which really shows why you might want to use flags. What I'm going to do is have a uh, another unit here. Let's have the uh, battle tank, the Abrams, and we'll call it M1A2s. We'll pop three of them in. Also give them a late activation and speed 25 uh, knots. And uh, we'll send them up this way, something like that. Again, late activation, so they're not going to appear until we tell them to. Let's come into the triggers again and let's create a new one and let's call this radio menu. And you know, sometimes in missions you have that F10 radio menu that lets you do stuff or choose options. Well, this is that. So radio menu and the condition, I'm just going to ask for time more than five. And literally the only thing that's going to do is five seconds after the mission starts, it's going to do whatever. That's what time more means. If the mission's already underway and you join the mission late online, then it'll wait five seconds for you and then do this. So it doesn't just happen once in the entire mission. It happens five seconds after you join the mission in whatever role that you're doing, if there's more than one player. So let's choose the action. I'm going to come down here to radio menu and we're going to do add for group because we're in the Huey, right? We don't want anyone else to have it. Even though this is only single player, you could just press radio item add because the AI doesn't use it. But good practice. Let's just add it for our group and it's the Huey group. And we're going to call the name. We're just going to call it M1A1. M1A1, right? 
and we're going to make the flag 10. We're going to make flag 10 value of 1. Now, the value of 1 is the same as being true or yes, positive, whatever you want to call it. Remember, the default is 0 or false. This means when we press the F10 menu in game, in the radio menu, we're going to see a line that just says M1A1. So let's make it a bit more descriptive. Let's call it spawn M1A1s, like that, yeah? And we're going to know now, when we look at that menu, oh yeah, I, I know what that is, spawn M1A1s, flag 10, value 1. So how do we translate that into these spawning? Actually, are they M1A2s? Sorry, they're M1A2s. Not that it matters, but it does, doesn't it? It's in the name, but let's get it right. Spawn M1A2s. There we go. So let's come into the triggers. We know that when we press that button in the F10 menu, that we're, in this case, going to get flag 10 coming true. And we know that the, that the tanks are there ready waiting, but they've just not been spawned yet. They've not been activated. So we want to create a check for flag 10, and when flag 10 comes true, then activate that group. So let's do that. Uh, check flag 10 for tanks. Let's call it like that. So the condition of flag is true. You could also check flag equals one, but remember if we make the flag equal one, that also makes it true. So flag is true, 10. Yeah, if the flag is true, 10, then do this. And it's only going to happen, once again, when we use the radio menu. And group activate and the M1A2s. All right. Let me quickly uh, show something here. Let's start the mission. Somewhere over here. I'm going to try and let's, uh, let's just land here. I'm not going to land on that those tires just yet. F10 view. And let's get rid of that. So there's no tanks yet because we've not landed in this circle and we've not used the radio menu to cause the uh, the modern tanks to spawn. These are just the uh, where are there we are. the old uh, the, the old thing that we had going right from the off. Those ones. So let's come to the uh, radio menu here and here we see now the F10 menus appeared and there's the spawn M1A2. So let's click on that. And that causes flag 10 to become true. And when flag 10 is true, these guys over here activate. And we can see now that they're going to make their way up to where they should have done all along. If we now land in here, clearly these other tanks are going to spawn as well. And it's going to get real clear. So And there they go. Let's try follow this one. See if they 
can already see and if they're, they're already in the car, they already are. Wow. So yeah, they've got a massive range compared to the German ones. These are probably going to easily win. Oh yeah, look at that. One guy left. He ain't got a chance. Look at all these shots he's absorbing from the uh, Germans, though. Abrams is firing. Oh, I got another hit. Strong out there. Just took another one to the face. And another. And he's finally caught fire. All right. So we see there the use of the radio menus and flags. We've seen zones with the flags. Um, we can make things happen based on multiple flags. What we could then do is just add one here. Let's say when the red tanks are dead red tanks dead uh, new condition and they were the so let's just say group dead and they were the tiger twos right so when that group is dead do this let's just say flag on 21 so when 21 flag is true, it means those tanks are dead, right? Let's clone that and let's call it blue. Tanks dead and the group dead in this case is going to be the Shermans. And if the Shermans die, flag on 22. All right. So these dead, flag 21 is true. Those dead, flag 22. Nothing else. Let's come to a mission end and assuming we're on the blue team right if flag 21 is true so they're dead then we've won because we're on the blue team right so let's do that if flag true 21 then Let's come down here. Uh, where are we? And there we go. End mission. And the winner is going to be blue. Yeah. And here you put in your congrats. Um, the enemy has been defeated. Uh, Colonel whatnot uh, salutes you, right? <laughs> and delay. I don't know. Let's pop a five second delay just so there's a bit of suspense. Have we won? Haven't we? Kind of thing. Not so like. The last unit hasn't even finished exploding and the thing pops up saying that you've won. All right, but we also want a mission lost, yeah? So let's close that. Clone it, sorry. We can call these things the same here. It's the only thing that you can name the same. Mission end. And in this case, if flag 22 is true, is if these guys die. Now, because we're on the blue side, if they die, we've lost. So we come over here, end mission, and in this case, the winner has been red, right? And the text is going to be, you messed up, you lost. Please try again. Uh, better luck next time. You know, all the usual, right? And again, don't need such a longer delay because people are going to be on the verge of rage critting anyway, right? So let's just say one second. So let's run that through, and this is going to be the end of it. I'm just going to fly into the circle, and uh, we'll watch the uh, tank battle uh, ensue without the Abrams, and we'll see, we'll see who wins. So let's take off, let's come to the circle.
but we're in the circle. The battle begins. F7, there we go. Uh, control one. And this guy don't know what to do with his barrel. These two are getting good value. <laughs> Look at honestly. This here is obviously a magnet for rounds now, right? Because you miss one, you're going to hit the other. Let's. Now he's blown up. That one guy left. And remember, we're on the blue team. Mission over. And we lost. We lost. That's the end of the mission. And I think... Um, I think we've bludgeoned triggers, flags, zones to death. Hopefully we can leave this alone now and move on. I've got all the uh, rest of the stuff lined up, ready to go. I said we wouldn't really have a working mission, and we don't really, do we? It's just we've done this to death now, and it works. And hopefully you can see how you can wait for things to happen. You can check on things. If you want to know what they do, Let's look for the different checks, right? All of coalition in a zone. Well, that's obvious. All of coalition out of a zone. So that's all the red ones or blue ones or whichever, yeah? All of red out of a zone to all of the group in a zone or out of a zone. A bomb in a zone. And he the type of the bomb, right? So you can check, for example... You know, like this one here, the uh, Mirage. If the Mirage has dropped a bomb and you have a big trigger, you can check for it that way. Uh, cargo unhooked, you know, for helicopters carrying cargo. So hopefully most of these are quite obvious. There's obviously the flag stuff. Uh, our group, is the group still alive or dead? And I don't know all of them. For example, uh, you know, I don't know X or cockpit argument in range i have no idea i think some of these things are scripting units obviously some of these are self explanatory is the unit in a zone is it outside of a zone is the altitude higher or lower is it damaged and over here then actions we've got These seem like a lot of scripting things. So affect smoke. You can make smoke come at a, at a uh, specific... Uh, they come at the centre of these, so they don't spread the whole area. They just come from where the centre is. So if we want smoke to come from there, for instance, you were doing an evac thing, it would be something like this. Let's Let's quickly make it happen. If time... If time is more... Now that's a bug, isn't it? Because that shouldn't be there. Oh no, I didn't change it properly, sorry. If time is more, there we go. Then, yeah, 10 seconds, then effect smoke at waypoint one. Preset. Um, sorry, we, we don't want the uh, smoke, smoke like, you know, that's like smoke and fire, like damage smoke. 
We want um, smoke as in land the helicopter type smoke. Um, and it's called, here we go, smoke marker. Zone one waypoint. Leave it at one. And the color, we've got the different colors. Let's say orange. And it, the only thing it's going to wait for is for the time to be more than 10 seconds. So that would be that. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, that's obvious that I can quickly go over. Obviously, end the mission. Explode a unit. We've gone explosion. I see that lets you choose where. All right, let's say zone two. Altitude, I don't know. Let's say 10 feet and there's a volume. Let's pop a unit in there and see if having a unit in zone two would cause it to damage. So we'll just pop an AI helicopter in. Um, type take off from ground. So it can't, oops, delete. So it's going to try and get started and take off. Let's move it. There, so it's going to be about 30 or 40 feet from where the explosion is. Let's see if that kills it. And we know it will have gone off because of the smoke marker, right? So we said after 10 seconds for a smoke marker to appear over there somewhere. And there's the Huey. So let's come over here. I heard the explosion. There's the orange smoke in the centre of that. Oh, and the explosion definitely got the hooey. Look at the size of that. All right, so that's something else you can do. And, yeah, I think we'll leave it there. I think the rest of the stuff you can read for yourself. Don't forget, we've got more tutorials coming. This is the first of five. If you haven't yet done so, look at the introduction. If you found it useful, subscribe. Got four more episodes coming. And for those that think, yeah, come on, you've done this to death. Yeah, all right, I get it. I've done it to death. But hopefully there's nobody that wants to learn about this that is now left behind. Because, I, you know, this is clearly a fundamental basic thing that once you've got, you can make all the logic stuff happen within a mission without any coding. And it's great. All right. Take care. Bye bye.